Forest Rangers and Campers, what are your unexplainable and downright creepy stories? Part 6, please subscribe and like to show us your appreciation. Account 1. Not a forest ranger, but I used to live in a very rural area in my youth. And when I had just turned 18, I was helping with a family friend's security company. It was October, about 9 p.m., and we had just starting the night shift of patrolling what was once a manor house. A little backstory on this place. Rumor had it that the house was cursed and haunted by demons and tortured souls alike. In the time it had been standing, it had been a simple place of residence, hotel, hospital, nursing home, and was eventually left abandoned and derelict in the late 60s, in the 40 years it was abandoned. It had been broken into by kids and gangs and had occasionally been set on fire, all wanting to see this curse for themselves or believed it enough to want the place gone. I didn't buy the whole haunting thing, but the place certainly made me feel a little uneasy. Back to the story. It was dark. Like it always is at that time at the end of October, it was also cold, and usually the lights around the garden kept it light enough that we could see what we were doing without the need for torches. That was when the lights went out. All of them. That was weird, but not to worry. We had the flashlights on our phones. But our phone screens were flickering. Okay, that was super weird. And if it stopped there, I probably would have gone home believing that there was some sort of issue with the electricity in and surrounding the house. Some areas are like that, especially in rural places. I live in a rural area now and all the lights blow out and flicker a lot because the electrics just aren't that great. I wish I could say it stopped there. We heard screeching coming from the house. It didn't even sound human, I can't even describe it, but it was enough for your stomach to drop, like the floor just collapsed beneath you and make your blood curdle. And for what must, we've been a solid 30 seconds, the inhuman screeching was accompanied by unintelligible whispers closer to us, and the occasional shadow, depicting various acts of suicide and self-mutilation. When we all determined that we did indeed experience what had just happened, we called the police about the disturbance and high-tailed it out of there as soon as they arrived. No evidence of there being anyone in the house was found, no signs of a break-in, nothing. Our team of four people were the only people on the property. I haven't set foot in there since. However, the other guys did, and as far as I'm aware, they never had an incident like that since. Account 2 during high school and college summers, I worked for the Pike National Forest in Woodland Park, Colorado, trail maintenance for ATVEs, dirt bikers, hikers, bikers, etc. Amazing summer job. One summer when I was like 18, we were driving around patrolling on a rainy day, and we noticed a car with its windows down about 20 feet off the main road. We thought nothing of it and headed back. When it was still there, the next two days after it had been raining all week, we stopped to check it out. On the car's front driver's seat are the keys to the car, a wallet, ID, and a few bucks cash. On the passenger seat was a note. I opened it, and I'll never forget what it said. Tell me again what it's like to feel anything except being cold. Yeah, we called the law enforcement officers, and they found him hung on a branch a few hundred feet away from the car. Twelve years later, and it still haunts me sometimes. Account 3. Back when we were about 14, my friends and I went up to stay at our buddy's family farm in rural New Hampshire, not much up there besides farmland and miles of deep woods. It was around midnight, and we had just spent a few hours fucking around, smoking cigars and building a bonfire up in one of the cow pastures. To get back to the house from the pasture, you needed to walk about half a mile through the woods and across another field, and the kid's dad had a tradition of messing with us on our way back. The usual routine was waiting on the porch and shooting Roman candles at us as we crossed the field. We started walking back, and as we emerged from the path, we started hearing loud rustling noises in the trees along the edge of the field about 70 yards away. We all ran into the middle of the field and hit the deck smiling, thinking my buddy's dad was about to start shooting fireworks at us. After about five minutes of the intermittent leaf, rustling and no Roman candles, our smiles were gone and we started debating if it was a black bear or some other big animal. The rustling was distinctly the sound of footsteps and would pick up and suddenly stop as if someone was running tree to tree. Thoroughly freaked out, my buddy pulls out his cell phone and calls the landline at his house. 
He stands up and walks a little in the direction of the house while my other friend and I stay laying down, staring in the direction of the noises. Suddenly something runs out of the tree line. I will never forget this image for as long as I live. We were still about 50 yards away, and there was only a crescent moon out, so there wasn't much light to make out fine details. But we watched as this inhumanly tall thing strode across a portion of the field and then back into the trees. It was skinny, with disproportionately long limbs, and in the dark appeared to be a solid light gray-white color. As it ran, its incredibly long arms and legs swung in this disturbingly unusual way, and it appeared to be moving much faster than it should have been. As fast as it had appeared, it was gone back into the forest. My friend and I looked at each other in silent horror. We stand up, ready to book it back to the house, my other friend walks back over to us. Oblivious to what we just saw, his dad picked up. He said he's been in bed for an hour. Without saying anything, me and my friend who witnessed it started sprinting for our lives back to the house. The other friend follows suit. We make it back, lock all the doors, and recount what we saw to the other friend and his dad. None of us slept that night. When we went downstairs in the morning, my friend's dad, whose bedroom was on the ground floor, tells us how throughout the night he heard something banging on the side of the house and windows and claimed he went out several times with his shotgun to find nothing. We thought he was just fucking with us at the time. But to this day, he stands by that story. As someone who doesn't believe in the paranormal, it's not a story I tell often, but the two friends who were there and I still talk about regularly and it scares the shit out of us, just this year, I shared it with another buddy of mine who loves that type of stuff. And after a quick Google search, he shows me this link along with a few others. Scroll down to Wood Devil. When I saw it, I nearly shit my pants. The description and depiction of this creature from local folklore matched what I saw perfectly. I honestly don't know what to believe, but I know what I saw. And it's safe to say you're never going to catch me in the NH Woods past sunset again. Bonus creepiness. The stretch of forest adjacent to his family's farm has been known locally as Boneswood and Devil's Wood for as long as his family has lived in the area, several generations. Account 4. I worked in a forest for a couple of years. I think it was when I was volunteering before I was given a job, my boss. Another volunteer and I were out in a more groomed part of the forest for public use. There had been a school group earlier and one of us notices a hoodie on one of the benches. I would have ignored it, but my boss said we should take it with us. Someone might come back for it. We go over. Boss picks it up, looked at the outside, some sport team logo, checks the tag for a name. Maybe a parent wrote one. Nope, boss says. Nice shirt. Shame a kid would forget it like this. And is checking out the material. Looking it over, then she yells and drops it. What? Look in the sleeve, I pick it up and look in. Hundreds of spiders. I guess that thing had been there for a while. Explains why it was big for a kid. Creepiest thing that happened to me. Account 5. Not a forest ranger, just the occasional hiker. I was with my girlfriend in upstate New York in New Windsor, I think. Really small trail, probably 45 minutes to complete the whole thing. But ran into some real creeps towards the end. In the middle of the trail, there's this watchtower you can climb, and above the tree line, my girlfriend and I climb it and spend about ten minutes up there. Then we hear some footsteps on the ladder. I look down, and there are two young men climbing up with machetes slung across their back. I don't panic, but my girlfriend starts freaking out. We are completely alone in the middle of this trail, just us two and our new visitors. Now, the watchtower viewing area at the top is maybe twenty square feet so not a whole lot of room for four people. So I have my girlfriend standing behind me while these two guys come up and are acting all casual. Not a word is said for a couple minutes as these two young guys are just casually looking out above the tree line. I decide to break the silence and ask them what they're doing out here. And one of them says, We come out here pretty often looking for people. His tone was trying to be intimidating, but I could just tell that it was somewhat fake. Either these two guys were just trying to scare us or they were toying with us, I replied with a joke. Oh, you must have hid the bodies really well. And everyone except my girlfriend who is still behind me laughs. We spend a few more minutes up there. 
I am getting pretty nervous because no words are being said. All I'm doing is watching their hands to see if they make a move for their machete. Then, they both make their way down the watchtower. Not a good, buy nothing. My girlfriend and I watch them run off of the trails and into the woods. We discuss how weird it was and how they were just trying to scare us. We decide that we are going to climb down and sprint our way to the car. We wound up getting to the car and getting out of there. As we are driving, my girlfriend tells me that she actually knew one of the kids. They went to the same high school. I was about 20 at the time she was 22. She tells me how he was one of those kids that was weird and got bullied in school and all those great attributes that you hope to see in a guy with a machete in the middle of the woods and how my girlfriend was one of the people who bullied him. Account 6. Obligatory not a ranger but By far the creepiest thing that's happened to me while in the woods. I grew up in a pretty rural area, and there was a gravel pit in the woods a few towns over that I used to camp at with my buddy, drink beer, and enjoy a nice bonfire. One summer night, we were there drinking and shooting the shit, and it was about 2 or 3 a.m. The fire lit our immediate area, but beyond the ring of light, it was essentially pitch black. We were dicking around as kids do and throwing our empty beer bottles out into the darkness, smashing them on the rocks out in the pit, and generally being rowdy. The third or fourth bottle I arced really high and far, and after I threw it I waited for the smash, but there was no smash or thump or any noise at all. I remember we looked at each other kind of drunkenly confused, and then out of the darkness the beer bottle came whipping back up at us and smashed on the rocks near our tent. As drunk as I was, I remember how surreal the moment was, the strange sinking feeling in my stomach and rising panic. We got in his truck and sped out of there as quickly as we fucking could. Never even went back there to retrieve our tent. Account 7. A fish and wildlife officer told me that one time they got dispatched to a house on an Indian reservation in northern Canada. They were told that a guy was complaining of a Bigfoot shaking his trailer. They went there and they came upon some elders of the reservation brushing off and hiding tracks with branches. They consider the Bigfoot as a spiritual creature. They have stories from back in the old days of run-ins with them. They are even on old totem poles. I also worked with a guy who reenacted fur trade days at old forts. He would get dressed up in his little Davy Crockett costume and act in front of school kids and such. He knew everything about Canadian history and said that back in the old days, Indians talked about creatures that lived in the rivers and they drew pictures to show what they looked like and they drew crocodiles. Account 8 I grew up in the Southwest, and when I was in high school, my friends and I would often have bonfires on the weekends. We would go gather a ton of pallets from the industrial park and load them into our trucks and take off out in the desert and stack them high and dose them in gasoline. While the fire burned, we'd always goof off and just chat. Well, one night while the fire was burning low and we were about to head to sleep, we realized we'd never really driven beyond where we usually stop and have a bonfire. We were really out a ways from town, but we thought, heck, why not? So we decided to drive down the road further into the desert. The moon was shining bright that night, and odd shadows formed. As we drove through ravines and along small hills, we noticed a bunch of cars out in the distance. We decided to cut the lights and the engine and set out on foot to investigate. I mean, who could be out here all this way? As we started walking towards the cars... We made sure to be extremely quiet and careful not to make a noise. In hindsight, this probably wasn't the wisest move we've ever made, but we were curious. After walking close to the vehicles, we realized they weren't occupied, but then we started to hear some voices in the distance over a ridge. As we got closer, we saw some tents and we heard two sets of voices. One was a set of adults and the other a set of youth. We had stumbled upon a boy scout camp out. Now what to do. We could hear the adult boys scout leaders at their wits end in their tent telling everyone in the other tent, the youth tent which was a ways off from the adult tent, to shut up and go to bed. Mind you, it was probably past midnight. The leaders then indicated that if they heard one more peep, they were going to pack up and head home that night. The boys shut up and then all was silent. My friends and I naturally agree it would be hilarious to go and mess with the kids and try to scare them. So we tiptoed over to the boys' tent and in a deep, quiet voice whispered things through the tent wall. 
We made sure we weren't letting the moon cast our shadows onto the tent. We did it so subtlety that it made them wonder if they heard anything at all. We whispered morbid things like, I'm going to slice your throat, or you better not fall asleep, etc. We started to hear the boys getting panicked inside their tent and whispering to each other. One of them called out to their leaders, and they just responded back by telling them to shut up and that this was their final warning. Then, one of my friends started imitating some sort of wild beast. We all started clawing on the tent and making noises, and they could see our shadows finally on the thin tent walls. The boys were straight up freaking out and yelling for their leaders. The leaders were super R pissed now and yelled they were getting dressed and that the boys should get dressed too because they're all going home now since none of them can shut up and go to bed. We hightailed it out of there and made it back to our vehicles and drove home. We thought we were so funny, but in hindsight, it's a pretty dickish thing to ruin a scout camping trip, but it was kind of worth it. My only regret was that we didn't stay behind and hide in the bushes to see how it all played out. And if the leaders would believe the boys, hysteria, scouts, if you're reading this, I'm sorry. And I hope I didn't scar you for life in regards to camping and having people believe you. Have a good laugh about it now. Maybe.